Good morning, true crime friends. How you doing? Look, we need to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, but I feel like I really, really need to talk about it. Oh yes, we are talking about Miss Sarah Boone. Few criminals have annoyed and frustrated me more than Miss Sarah Boone. But Miss Sarah Boone has a new lawyer, and um, we really, really need to have a talk. We really need to have a conversation about her case in general and this lawyer in particular. But first, you know what you need to do. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. So look, in case you don't know, first of all, there's a Sarah Boone playlist, and I will link it in the description of this video. But to give you the brief, brief overview of Miss Sarah Boone, Sarah Boone was over there at her house playing hide and seek with her boyfriend George, and not in like the cute slap and tickle sexy way, but just like you hide and I'm gonna find you. That's her story. Because obviously, 40 year olds all the time play hide and seek, right? Anyway, so according to Sarah, she and George were like having a leisurely evening at home. They were sipping wine because she's like, I don't drink. You know, I don't like to be drunk. I don't like to be out of control. I only sip. Um, so they were sipping wine and doing puzzles and painting. And then they decided to engage in an adult game of hide and seek fully dressed. What would the point of that be? Anyway, and she put him in a suitcase. And then he was just like, okay, Sarah, this is really fun. You found me. Um, but also, if she zipped him in, how is that hiding? You don't have to see because you could just see him because that's where you put him. So anyway, he gets in the suitcase. She zips the clothes. And then he's like, oh, babe, can you let me out of the suitcase? And she's like, mm, no. And so while he's in the suitcase, he starts saying, babe, you got to let me out. You got to let me out. And begging for his life because he can't breathe. And she was like, right, 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 right. Again, no. Um, and so then according to Miss Sarah, she um, sipped a little too much and she was feeling a little tired, aka drunk. And she went upstairs and she passed out, fell asleep like you do when your boyfriend is zipped in a suitcase. And so the next morning she woke up and she was like, mm, I slept so good. Where is George? I don't, George, are you here, George? And she went downstairs and what do you know? George was still in the suitcase and she was like, oh babe, I'm so sorry. Let me unzip him. Oh Lord, he's dead. And so then she was like, <clears throat> She did what any normal person would do. If you find um, your boyfriend zipped in a suitcase dead at your house, you call your ex-husband. So she called her ex-husband and was like, um, Brian, I think his name was Brian. Brian, George is dead. And Brian was like, yeah, for what? Now look, this t-shirt was not made for Miss Sarah Boone, but nobody, nobody has needed a half a what more than Sarah Boone. Anyway, so Brian is like, oh, you should definitely call 911. I don't want no parts of this. And she was like, I don't, I mean, I feel like the police are going to be mad if they come over here and he's like dead like a carp on the floor. Um, and Brian is like, right, you should call 911. And she's like, okay, okay, I'm going to call. Can you come? over here though and brian was like you should call 911 she's like okay i'm gonna call but i need you to come and he's like i will come over if you promise to call the police now keep in mind in my opinion brian was like this half was probably still drunk from last night because she does not sip she chugs wine all the time she cannot stop she has a serious alcohol problem but she likes to tell people she sips so i'm gonna go over there and i'm sure george is just passed out drunk as well because that was their hobby smacking around each other and getting drunk and um i will go and i will make sure george is alive because obviously he's not dead and then i will leave and so brian gets there and he's like oh lord he's dead and so that he was like, Sarah, did you call the police? And she was like, no, I was smoking a cigarette because this whole thing has stressed me out. And he was like, Heffa, you need to call the popo. And she's like, okay, y'all. Uh, will you help me though? And he's like, 911, how hard is that? No, girl, you got to call the police. So she calls the police and the police get there. And she's like, um, he's super dead. And the cops were like, wait, did you do, did you perform CPR? And she's like, mm-mm, because all the deadness. And she's like, you know, I have a cigarette going on the back porch. Can I just go smoke my cigarette? And they were like, ma'am, uh, George is dead. And she's like, right, but that cigarette is not going to smoke itself. Also, I have a cocktail because, ooh, sometimes when you wake up in the morning and your boyfriend is dead, you need a cocktail. I, I don't know what happened. So they were trying to get her to explain what happened. And she really, really could not explain it good. So they were like, okay, we're just going to download your photo. We're going to send you home or whatever. So she um, goes home to her husband's house because all the icky deadness was there on the floor. 
Also, at some point, I think she finished the cigarette. I'm not sure. I know in the police interrogation video, she kept being like, I need to finish that cigarette. That cigarette's gonna burn out. You know, that's a waste of good money. Cigarettes are expensive. Where's my cocktail? I had a morning screwdriver, you know, orange juice because vitamin C. You Listen, I got a little amphibian in my throat this morning. Please bear with me. Hang on. So, the cops are like, okay. Um, the next day, they're like, <clears throat> Sarah, girl, can you come down to police station so we can get just like a full outline of what happened? And she was like, of course. I, you know, I was sipping wine with my pinkies out like I am want to do because I don't like to drink really that much. Um, and sadly, George put himself in the suitcase and he died. It's terrible. They're like, right, remember when we downloaded your phone? Um, we found this nice video on your phone and it shows the two of you blackout drunk, obviously, and you um, torturing him in the phone. He's begging for his life. And you're like, when every time he says, I can't breathe, you're like, that's how I feel when you choke me. That's how I feel when you cheat on me. And she's like, oh, please don't show me more of this video. It hurts my feelings. And they were like, right, ma'am. George has slipped the surly bonds of this earth. And she's like, I know. Can you please stop talking about it? Because it is upsetting to me. And the cops are like, okay, we go give you these nice bracelets and you have the right to remain silent. We just gonna put you over here in the prison where there are no suitcases. So you're not gonna have to worry about that part of it. And um, you gonna, we're gonna get you locked up. So she has this lawyer for like two years and they were just about to come to trial. And she's just like, I don't like this guy. I he doesn't understand me and they she goes back and forth with her lawyer and right before they go to trial her lawyer quits <clears throat> but that's okay a new lawyer gets hired and so that lawyer starts working on the case and she's like mm, i don't like this guy rinse and repeat times eight yes this hapa has been through eight lawyers after locking her boyfriend in a suitcase confessing to locking him in the suitcase having it on video where she's torturing him i mean torture they were both drunk who who's to say what torture is to me torture would be having to listen to this heifer but um they're having not a great relationship, but she has it all on video. It was on her phone. And while she was sipping her wine, she did not remember recording all of the video. And so <clears throat> Miss Sarah has gone through lawyer after lawyer after lawyer. Now look, Sarah Boone gets on my nerves. Let me be abundantly clear. She gets on my last good nerve. And so I don't cover every hearing, but you know who does? My my personal Sarah Boone expert. Oh, Tanika. Over there at the Tanika's Two Cents. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a link to um, Tanika's channel in, this, in the description of this video, along with my own Sarah Boone playlist. I just touch down on Sarah every now and then because Sarah... Oh, I can't stand this heifer. But Tanika has all the patience in the world and she just plods through all of um, Sarah Boone's stuff with like sass and wit and humor. So go on, check out Tanika. Anyway, recently I found out from Tanika that um, this lawyer, finally, after eight lawyers, um, the judge was like, mm -mm, I have had enough more than enough of you. I think me and that judge are of one accord. Neither one of us likes Sarah, although he has to be like impartial or whatever. Me over here on the gossip channel, not so much. I can be like, mm, I don't like this heifer. So anyway, he was like, uh, you have fooled around and found out. And so now no more lawyers for you. Now, if you got some money, you want to hire your own lawyer, that's your business. But the state money, we're not giving you no more lawyer money. And she's like, your honor, I've only been through eight and it's not really my fault, ma'am. When there have been eight lawyers, something tells me you might have had something to do with it. And she's and the the judge was like, no, you have you are now pro se. You are now representing yourself. And she's like, that's not fair. And he's like, mm -hmm, too bad for you. So finally, she was like, okay, I am not a lawyer. I'm just a regular alcoholic idiot down here at the jail. And the girls in the prison and the jail are giving me good advice. But um, they're not lawyer either, lawyers either. Also, they locked up, so they're not in a much better situation than me. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a piece of typing paper and I'm going to hand write out um, an advertisement. Help, um, crazy lady who might have accidentally locked her boyfriend in a suitcase needs help and so she wrote herself an advertisement and Vinny Politan over at the court tv put it on the evening you know the the court tv news 
and this lawyer out of Milton, Florida, I don't know where that is, um, saw it. And he was just like, oh, that crazy lady. Now listen, might she be a little touched in the head? Yes, but everybody deserves a good defense attorney. And I am like, bless his heart because somebody has to have that kind of compassion for this lady because clearly it's not going to be me. Anyway, <clears throat> oh my goodness, oh. That little amphibian that has come to live in my throat is not letting me alone. Anyway, so um, James Owens is like, okay, I'm sure somebody's going to step up, but then nobody stepped up to become her lawyer. And he's like, obviously, I will have to do it. And I was like, get out of here. So he was just like, now look, I saw this man on the court TV. He was interviewed last night and... He has a thick Southern accent, but he's from Florida. So I'm like, is he from like the Alabama portion of Florida? I don't know where he lives. Milton, Florida? I, I, I don't know. I know Bergen County, New Jersey. Florida, that's like a whole other country for me. So anyway, this man from Milton, Florida in Alabama um, went down to Orange County. Also, I don't know where that is. Um went down and was like, okay, Sarah. And they met for four hours in the jail and they decided that they are going to work together. Also, Sarah is kind of at the end of her rope. Like nothing will soften up your disposition, like having your back against the wall. She's like, oh, if it's not this dude, then I got to defend myself. Okay. But here's the thing that blew my mind. The lawyer was like, um, no, I'm not pro bono. Sarah is going to pay me. S sir, sir. Um, Help me to understand how Miss Sarah is going to pay you. I do, I, I do not get it at all. According to James Milton, it is important that all of his clients understand that they have to pay their own way. He said, I have some clients that pay me just like $50 a month. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. They need to pay for their legal defense. And I'm like, right, but she going to jail. We all know she going to be convicted, right? She's going to be super, super convicted. So, um... Does he accept payment in like honey buns and beef, step, beef sticks? Because that's, I think that's, sir, Um, do you have like a ramen noodle exchange? I am not clear how she's going to pay him. But she says, he says, someday she's going to pay me back. Okay. I suspect that this fine gentleman is going to get paid in like publicity and other crazy people coming to him being like, hey, can you be my lawyer too? Because something tells me maybe there's like a lot of criminals who need his help in his area. And so this is good national advertising, advertising for him. So good for him. Okay. So they're going to work it out and Sarah Boone is going to pay his, her lawyer in honey buns, in my opinion. Um, and they're going to use the battered spouse syndrome because clearly, according to the lawyer and according to, Cle to Sarah, she was a battered spouse. Wait. Um, call me crazy. She is bad. Now listen, was George arrested for DV? Yeah, a whole bunch of times. Was she arrested for DV? Yeah, a whole bunch of times. They used to beat on each other. But in this particular case, He's the one who's no longer here. I don't. Although they did recently have that Marsha Thompson case where her husband would sleep on the couch and she filled him full of lead nine times. And she walking free in these streets right now. I covered the case. I don't know where. There's probably a Marsha Thompson playlist. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere on this channel. But um, Miss Marsha Thompson. But her case of domestic violence was well documented. And according to this attorney, James Owens, he's like, mm -mm, we're going to get that lawyer, the, the psychologist from the Marsha Thompson case. And we are going to try and set Miss Sarah free. What kind of work can Sarah do? Can you be annoying for a living? Is that a job? Because if it is, then um, she excels. Anyway. There's a long DV history between this couple. And so yesterday, or a couple days ago, <clears throat> Mr. Owens went to court and he was like, hey, Judge, how you doing? I'm representing crazy over there. I, I, I mean, um, I'm representing Sarah. We have developed a strong, trusting relationship and she promises not to fire me and I promise not to bail. Um, and so we would like to pursue a battered spouse defense. And so I'm going to need more time. And the judge was like, oh, hey, dude, thanks for playing. No. And he's like, but wait, wait, I, I, I just, I just took the case. And the judge is like, mm-hmm, this case been lingering for four years. And it's this heifer who is causing all the delays and all the everything else. So yeah, thanks dude, but no. So you're going to need to file your papers and do whatever you got to do. That ain't on me. So, um, I encourage you to get your act together. And so the lawyer 
who was very diplomatic and kind and understanding. He was like, I understand the situation, Your Honor. Um, I understand this is trial is coming in like 30 days or 45 days or something. So um, I will have myself all together. And I'm like, really? He's just going to shut down his whole life and he's going to work solely on this case. Listen, when this case comes to court, I will be there every day. I will give breathless coverage of what happens day by day. But then an unexpected thing happened. I found out a little bit about um, George Torres, the decedent in this case. Um, his family is having a scotch of bad luck. Here's the thing. George Torres's brother is on trial for first degree unfortunate unaliving. And I was like, wait, what? Um, <clears throat> this family might have like a curse on them or something. Who is in charge of like voodoo or something like that? Because they... It, it's a bad situation. I was like, well, um, did somebody attack George Torres's brother? What happened? Um, George Torres's brother unfortunately unalived his girlfriend in a domestic violence situation by impaling her in her face until she was no longer on this mortal coil. Y'all, what is happening in this family? Look. It is terrible when you have one person in your family in a bad situation or whatever, all of this is going down. Terrible, heartbreaking. You got two, uh, is his mama still living? Is his daddy still around? I don't, this whole thing, this whole thing blows my mind, but I don't, I don't, I don't know nothing about that DV life, praise God, but I just like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Everything about the the both of these families, Sarah's mom and them, George's mom and them, y'all a whole mess. So um good luck on your project. I don't there will be more to come on uh Miss uh, Sarah Boone. In the meantime, y'all watch Tanika's two cents for the up to date, the all the pre-trial motions and all of that, because I, I don't have that kind of bandwidth. But when the trial comes, I'ma be here and I will see you soon. Bye.